All right, y'all. Today, I'm going to show y'all Louisiana-style boiled crawfish. We'll walk through every step in detail from how to clean them, how I season them, all the fixings that goes in to make all the flavor and everything in between. So if you're not subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you hit the subscribe button like this and make sure that all your notifications on so you can get all these southern videos that I'm about to be putting out. I'm telling y'all, it's pressure. Let's get into it. So boom, first we want to start off with our sack of crawfish. A sack can range anywhere around 30 to 40 pounds. This sack is about 28 pounds. I got a smaller one because I'm using this to peel and we're going to eat a few of them, but most of them are going towards crawfish bits. Another video y'all need to look forward to. But the first thing you want to do with crawfish is clean them. Everybody has their different methods and ways to clean them. This is mine. Crawfish are mud bugs. As you can see that the bottom of the water is full of dirt, is filthy, and you don't want none of that into your crawfish bowl or in your mouth. So you must clean them. A lot of people will tell you to purge your crawfish in water and pour salt in it to make them spit up all that dirt. But crawfish aren't in salt water. So what you're doing by putting the salt in it is killing them and you don't want dead crawfish. So what I do is hose off the top with some pressure just to push that dirt to the bottom. As you can see, they're already starting to get a little bit cleaner. I'm cleaning mine in my crawfish pot, so I'm opening the valve and letting the water flow through. Once I hose them off, I close the valve and then I fill it up with the water. And as you can see, this water is dirtier than the Mississippi River. You can barely even see the crawfish in there, and this is what you do not want. And to reiterate, there's different methods to cleaning your crawfish again. This is just how I do mine, and there's different ways you can buy crawfish cleaners that'll push this around, but I just like to shake it around just to agitate the crawfish to help them spit out that dirt and get that dirt out of there. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and strain the water out again, and then we're gonna redo that whole process all over again about two or three times. After the first couple times, you'll already start to see the water gets a little bit clearer. The dead ones will float to the top. You're gonna go ahead and take those out. Again, you don't wanna have dead crawfish going into your crawfish bowl. Now we're gonna go ahead and fill it up and then open the valve and let it just strain until that water runs clear. This whole process will take 30 minutes to an hour. Really, it's longer than actually even cooking them. But it's a step you don't want to miss. And as you can see, we didn't have to use any salt or anything. And the crawfish are alive, well, and most importantly, they're clean. And since I'm boiling in this pot, I want to remove the crawfish so I can get the fixings ready. You want to store your crawfish in a cool area until you're ready to use them and make sure that they have some oxygen to flow through because you don't want to suffocate them. And out of this whole batch, we only had three dead ones, which is good. And since I'm using my crawfish pot, I want to go ahead and hose it out and make sure all that excess dirt is out of there because we don't want none of that in our boil. Once it's nice and clean again, we're going to fill it with distilled water and then we're going to go ahead and get started on our fixings. When it comes to a crawfish boil, you can literally throw anything in there from fruits, vegetables, proteins, whatever. But the most important things are the key things that people use in a crawfish boil in the South would be corn, sausage and potatoes. Now you can use russet potatoes, but I just prefer to use red potatoes. I just, it's just my preference. They better for me. Now we're gonna come with our sausage. You can use whatever sausage you like. If you don't like heat, use a mild one. I like to use spicy and mild, but you wanna cut them into bite-sized pieces, about two or three biters. This is just something to eat in between eating the crawfish. And you can use whatever sausage you want. You can use andouille sausage, smoked sausage, pork sausage, beef sausage, anything. People even put turkey necks, turkey wings. I've seen somebody put a whole chicken in there. So do whatever you want. You could also put pineapples, mushrooms, string beans, Brussels sprouts, all that. But again, for this boil, we're keeping it down to the basics, corn, potatoes, and sausage. And as for the corn, you want this frozen solid. We're going to put this in after the crawfish have cooked to cool down the whole pot. These soak up flavor so quick, so you don't have to put them in that long. Now we're going to come with all our flavor boosters. First, we're going to start off with a sweet yellow onion. You don't want to have to worry about taking the skin off. It's all going to the same place. So slice about three to four onions in half, and then we're going to put it to the side. Flavoring your seafood boil is kind of like flavoring a stock. You use every part that they have. So we don't want to throw away any part of any of these vegetables. We're using every single part. The whole thing is going into the boil. So go ahead and chop up your whole stalk of celery, every single piece, and throw it in there along with the onions. You want all your fixings to be around the same size. So we're going to cut this just how we cut those sausages. Now we have my favorite part of the boil, the garlic. Sometimes I'll boil these down by themselves in some crab boil and then make some garlic bread with it. You can see that one on my Instagram. The handle is Fly Chef Alden B. But just like the onions, we're going to keep these whole and they're going to cook down into the boil and you'll squeeze them right out. So throw that whole thing in there as well. Now we're going to come with our citrus element. We have some lemons. I feel like a lemon goes with almost any seafood. It adds the perfect flavor to all seafood. That zestiness mixed with that spicy is just, it makes my water just thinking about it. We're going to go ahead and cut about three to four, maybe five lemons. 
based on the size, just do it to your liking. Now we're going to go ahead and put that to the side with our vegetables. Now we're going to come with our oranges. As you can see, I got the sweetest ones possible. That citrus flavor to go with the lemons as well as the sweetness of the oranges and the spiciness of the boil, the saltiness, everything in here just works perfect together. So go ahead and cut again about four or five oranges and then put those with the vegetables as well. Now that we have everything cut and prepped, it's time to get the boil started. Now, when I turn my propane on, I know they might have some air left in there and that's not what you want. So what I do is let it bleed. I turn it on and for a couple of seconds to push out that excess air. Then I turn it off and then let it sit back for a couple of seconds so we don't blow ourselves up. From there, we'll turn it on slightly and then go ahead and press the ignite button and it should turn right on. Having a quality boiler is just so key and it's just it just makes your life better. This stuff will get hotter faster than you can put the crawfish in there. But now that we have our fire started, we're going to come with everything except for the corn, sausage, and potatoes. A lot of people will tell you to squeeze the oranges and lemons into the thing. But again, don't waste your time. All that's going to come right down into the boil and cook out, and you don't need to do all that. Just put them right in there. Now we want to wait for our pot to get some slight heat to it before we add our seasonings because we want it hot enough so the seasonings could dissolve into the water. Now, everyone has their own seasoning blend. For me, I like to use four pounds of my favorite seafood boil seasoning along with about three ounces of garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, cayenne pepper to your taste, and then some bay leaves. You can use salt if you want, but again, your preference, everybody has their own way. Do what you like. Just remember, if you ain't sneezing, it ain't seasoned. Throw the whole thing in there. Now we're gonna add in some concentrated liquid seafood boil. You can use half a bottle. I like to use the whole bottle. I like it as spicy as it can be. Then you want to come with a whole bottle of hot sauce. You want to get the type that you can pop the top off and just pour it right in because you don't want to be there shaking it all day trying to get all that hot sauce out. And again, use as much hot sauce as to your preference. And this is why we don't understand why people have to put seasoning on top of their crawfish in Louisiana. That boil is going to have so much flavor in it that you don't need anything other than what's in this water. You don't have to sprinkle nothing on top. You don't have to put no sauces, nothing. And another thing, I know y'all already peeped the shirt out. It's a pecan, not a pecan. If you don't agree, argue with your mom. Let's get back into it. <laughs> we want this to cook down for about 10 minutes before we add our sausage and potatoes. Now we're going to close this off and let it cook for another 10 minutes. And this is why I said you do not need to squeeze the lemons. All the pulp and everything is out of there and into that boil. You would have been wasting your time squeezing them in there. And then again with the onions and garlic. Look how the skin just easily peels off. Now you got this sweet tender onion to just, pff, I'm telling y'all, it's pressure. Now for the main event, the crawfish. We're going to go ahead and add as much as the Lord allows. I need all that. Go ahead and mix it all up. And now you want your crawfish to come to a rolling boil. And if you were wondering about the seafood boil I have, I got this one from Academy. They also have bigger ones, but this one works fine for me. And most of the time you're eating your boil outside. So you want to make sure that you set up some tiki torches around the yard because there ain't nothing worse than a bunch of flies bothering you while you're trying to eat your crawfish. Now back to the show. Once your crawfish comes to a boil, you want to only cook it for about two to three minutes. Set a timer. That's all you need. Once those two to three minutes pass, we're going to go ahead and cut the fire off completely. Now, this is one of the most important parts of a boil, the soak time. I have a different way of doing mine. Everybody has their own way. But for me, I do a hot soak and then a zesty soak. For the hot soak, I'm going to let them sit as is for about 10 minutes. You want them to start to soak up that flavor. As you can see, most of your crawfish are at the top, so that means they haven't even begun to soak up that flavor yet. After that first 10 minutes, you'll see them start to sink to the bottom. Now it's time for the zesty soak. Some people like to hose down the side of their crawfish pot to cool it down. I like to just add some ice. It won't dilute it because we have plenty of flavor. And you could also save some of the juice from this boil, freeze it, and use it in place of ice next time you have a boil. And I keep having to reiterate this. Whatever you like in your crawfish boil or however you like to do it, you do that. Now, on top of the ice, we're going to add some frozen corn. The corn is going to soak up all this flavor so quickly. So it only needs about 10, 15 minutes as well to cook down and to suck up all that flavor. Now, this is another optional thing I like to add just to put a little bit more flavor. They're called boil boosters. They have all different flavors of boil boosters from citrus, smashed garlic, herbs. And the best part about it is salt free. So it just adds flavor without the salt. This one is a citrus flavor, so I pour it in there and then I'm just going to mix it up into my zesty soak and then let all this soak for about 15 minutes, maybe 10. The longer it soaks, the more flavor it'll soak up. As you can see, the corn has put up all the seasoning and the kernels in between everything already and it hasn't even been 10 minutes. But once those crawfish sink to the bottom, it's soaked up all the flavor you need. Those heads are juicy. It has every single thing you need. And you want to go ahead and taste test it to your preference. If it's not salty or flavorful enough, just let it soak a little bit longer. 
Now for the taste test, I'm gonna show y'all how I peel a crawfish. First, you wanna detach the tail from the head. You go ahead and suck the head because that's where all the flavor is at. If you don't do this, you're missing out. Now you wanna gently pinch the tail and pull apart and you'll devein it just like that. A lot of people will peel that first layer of the shell off first, but I just like to crack it all the way and then just pull it apart just like that. It may feel tedious at first, but I've been eating crawfish my whole life, so it's just second nature and therapeutic to me. But once those crawfish have soaked to your liking, pull them out and look at that. <laughs> Yes, Lord. We're going to pull them out, serve them up for the family, eat them piping hot with all your fixings. And just like my name, you're all done. And if y'all found this video insightful or entertaining, make sure y'all like and subscribe. I'm new to YouTube, so I want to start doing this more. Thank y'all for watching.